What's going on? Yeah, let me talk about a little bit about this flat earth theory. Now, in the Bible, God says, devil is the most cunning and deceptive animal on the earth. Okay? He's the most cunning. He'll do anything to make you lose focus of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He'll make you lose everything just by making you paying attention to useless controversies and all these kind of things. Okay, look at 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strikes. The devil is trying to make you lose focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to enter into these useless arguments, whether the earth is flat or not. You're not here to proclaim the earth is flat, whether it is or it's not. It's not even the question. You shouldn't be striving and, and trying to make your point that this is or not so. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. You are just doing things on your own, inspired by the devil himself. Because this produces many quarrels and, and useless arguments, useless wasting of time on this kind of things. Instead, the Bible says, as you see the day near, gather to pray together, to, to love one another. That is the greatest commandment, is to love one another as Christ loved you. And to focus on your love, on your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ building fellowship with Him. In 1 John chapter 1 and 2, it talks about if you are in darkness, you have no fellowship. I'm asking you a question. Does that produce godliness in you? Does focusing on flat earth and looking up scriptures and arguing, arguing, does that produce any fruit? It produces zero. It only produces you to even get closer to the hellfire. Because if you cannot focus yourself in praying and seeking God and have a fellowship with the Son Jesus Christ and with the Father, then you have nothing to do with Him. Jesus Christ said, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Well, do you really have victory over sins? Focus on having victories over your sins. And I've touched in many ways how to overcome sins through clinging on to Jesus Christ. You cannot produce any fruit unless you stay in the prayer closet every day of your life. At least two plus hours a day. If you don't have that kind of relationship, you will have a lot of darkness in your life. A lot of defeat. A lot of stress that you cannot overcome. You cannot overcome sin by your own self-disciplines. It is only by your fellowship with the light, which is Jesus Christ. He's the only true light. He's the only one that can give you grace, the power to overcome sins, to be victorious over sins. And it is that relationship when you are one with that light that is inside you through the Holy Spirit, then you'll have victory. You cannot have it by training your flesh. Oh, I'm not going to go uh, watch the porn. Oh, I'm not going to go. I'm just going to break my computer and do this. It'll help to some event, but you will not be able to hold your eyes from lusting after a woman when you see them. So you need desperate prayers. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 26, 40 to 41, said, what, you couldn't pray one hour with me? The flesh is weak. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray so that you do not enter into temptation. Why are you being tempted over and over? Why? Because your prayer life is very little. The prayer is the oil that you have in your soul. That is where the oil, the anointing of the Holy Spirit can give you uh, can keep your light burning so that you do not enter into darkness. Because as you 
spend your time during the world, the darkness, uh, eventually your, your oil runs out of fuel and your, 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 your lamp light will go off. And then you'll be in darkness. And when it's flickering off and off, you, you have a lot of demons and devils that are attacking you. Did the Bible ever say to you, focus on these controversies of this world? Like, oh, is Trump Illuminati or not? Or, or Illuminati, this and that. Did ever Bible say anything to focus on Illuminati and the UFOs and the, the prophecies, the Trump prophecies, all these prophecies? Did any, anywhere in the Bible does it ever ask you to focus? What is the greatest commandment? Stop losing the focus. It's to love God with all your heart, with all your strength, and all your mind, and to love your neighbors as you love yourself. If you love yourself, you should be interceding for your neighbors and you should be evangelizing to your neighbors. You should be focused on God if you love God. You should focus yourself on the Word, whether you are following Him or not. You should focus on praying and seeking God in your own place. You know, I, I, I ask you to at least pray two hours, but you won't be really reaching if your goal is two hours. You should set that as a minimum, but you should strive for about four hours. You should just strive. Make that your goal. Then at least when you mess up and when you don't make it, you'll at least have two hours plus. At least. And you, you have more than victory. I assure you, you'll have more than victory if you at least have two hours or more in prayer. It's 10% of your time. You should tie your life. You should tie your life. Okay? It's 10% of your time, 2.4 hours a day. It's 10% of your time. You should tie your life with God. And Jesus was our greatest example of, of a perfect Christian, how he should live on earth. And he, by habit, prayed all night long, many, many times, over and over. By habit, he go to the mountain in the evening. He go by praying all night, and then he come back and does do healings and miracles. He is our perfect example. He had fellowship with the Father every day, and that is possible also with us. Some person asked me, oh, why do you have to pray two hours? Oh, you just need to pray with a sincere heart. I agree, you do need to pray with a sincere heart, but if you look at Jesus, maybe you should ask him that question. You should ask Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, this person said, oh, you just need to pray with a sincere heart, five minutes or ten, that's okay. Why did you, Jesus, pray all night long? Why did you pray all night long in the presence of God? Why did you do that? Isn't it just by faith? Isn't it just by faith? Why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus tell his disciples to pray? More than one hour at least, so that you don't fall into temptation. Why did Jesus say that to them? And they were praying like, you know, like 2-3 o'clock in the morning, you know? and. And why did Jesus do that? Because it was necessary for God. Why did Daniel pray three times a day? Oh, he could have just prayed one time a day. If you're going by that standard, which I think is totally, totally nonsense, by going by that standard, why did Daniel have to pray three times a day? Oh, why? Because he's such a holy prophet? Why did Moses stay in the Ark of the Covenant like all day long? Why did he stay there? in that quiet place where before the Lord waiting upon. Why did he do that? Why? Why did Elijah and all these uh, famous people, why did they fast and pray and seek God every day, uh, kneeling down seven times before him for the rain to come? Why did Jacob wrestle with God all night? And you can go so on and so on. Why did people cry out in, in, unto God? Why did King David go to the holy place and worship God all day long? Why did he do that until his pants fall down? He was dancing before long. Why would he do these extreme things? Because he was fellowshipping with God. And that's what we desperately need. A fellowship with God to defeat sin. And you can overcome all sins. All problems. You can overcome all problems. You have problems with finance, disease, uh, death. You have, fi you have problems with your family members? Is there peace among you? Why do you not have victory in those areas? Because you're in darkness. Every single problem can be all solved if you stay in 
the presence of the Lord at least 2.4 hours a day at least that is the minimum you should go for more for safe sleep I mean you can you can work all day long but you cannot uh, be in the kingdom of God where the Holy Spirit presence is that's the rest where the kingdom of God is in the presence of God you cannot stay in it you cannot worship the Lord and pray and read the Bible all day long you know like about 2.4 hours of Plus, you cannot do that. If you had an interceding list of the people that you intercede and pray for, which you should do, if you had that, reading that alone, that list alone will take at least 40 to an hour, depending how many people you're praying for. But if you're praying for about, you know, 100 or more people, hey, it will take at least over an hour. It will take about an hour. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say so? Or, or at least 40 minutes or whatever. It's going to take a lot chunk of time. And then you can pray in the Spirit of God in tongues. Now, when you don't believe in speaking in tongues, it's because you have no dedication. You, you don't have it, number one, because you don't believe the Scriptures. When the Scriptures clearly said, Jesus clearly said, And these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They will speak in new tongues. They will cast out demons. They will heal the sick. Okay, these signs should follow those who believe. You don't believe that Scripture, that Jesus Christ's words is permanent word it's not a one time event. it is a permanent word it is same yesterday today and forever it is a permanent thing okay number one that is a permanent promise of God you cannot break that scripture if you do you're just a, you're just playing with the word of God you're, you're subtracting and deleting no that's a curse upon you don't do that number one you don't believe the word of God that's why you don't have tongues number two you are not carrying your cross daily dying to yourself every day and, and stop being the Lord over your life. That's why you don't have it. And number three, you're not asking. You're not asking and seeking. Paul says clearly to seek the spiritual gifts and even earnestly desire better than that. Better gifts like prophesying, prophesying and stuff. But you, you don't have no prayer life. And, and you're trying to prophesy. Uh, you just think it's reading the Bible. It's not reading the Bible. Okay? They spoke as if they were inspired of God. That's prophecy. Okay, in the Bible, that's clear what prophecy is. Not reading the Bible. Then anybody can prophesy. Even unbeliever can prophesy just reading the Bible. No, it's not that. Prophesying is inspired by the Holy Spirit and as holy man spoke by inspiration as God. That's prophecy. That's prophesying. They hear God's voice clearly because they're, they're spending time with God. You know, they hear God's voice clearly and they're speaking what they hear from the Lord. That's prophesying. Simple. Okay? Why do you make it a weird doctrine? Don't get deceived by the devil. Okay? Bible is as it is. Don't focus on anything else that has nothing to do with the gospel of Christ. Controversies, flat earth, all these theory to God, to Him, it's, it's just garbage and nonsense. Nonsense. They'd be like, did I ever ask you to evangelize about flat earth? To, to tell people about flat did, did Jesus ever, ever mention that? No, he said, go and proclaim this gospel. You know, that the, the, I have died for you. And that through faith and, and believing in the Lord, you know, repenting in, into the kingdom of God, preach this gospel unto all creatures. He didn't say preach... Uh, the gospel of flat earth to people and you're wasting your time well I don't know what you're doing why would you do this that's the deception of the devil you need a fellowship a relationship with Jesus Christ daily okay that is a that is in the Word of God first John 1 2 read read go ahead. and you need to start coming out of the darkness you need to become an overcomer the only way to overcome sin nothing else by your relationship with that fellowship with Christ every day, dying to yourself daily. Why do you keep on sinning? Because you don't, you have forgotten that you're dead to sin, that you're dead to your own self, that you're dead to your own self, and that you should now follow the Holy Spirit. You know, Romans chapter 8 1, this verse I said again and again, it was cut in half first. Now there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay? The condition of the word of no condemnation is those who not those who don't walk after the flesh, 
to sin after the flesh because if you do that you're you're gonna die that's death that's spiritual death but those who crucify their flesh and follow the spirit to them there is no condemnation because the holy spirit reminds you and then teaches you all things that you should know if you sin you made a mistake god will make sure he reminds you and you listen you hear and you'll you ask for forgiveness it's simple as that okay so overcome these things by prayer there's nothing else read the word make sure you focus on the word and in prayer every day pray don't pray five minutes this is not this is not pray at least two hours at least minimum try to go for four please make your goal to go for four every day and you'll at least have two hours or more if you don't have gift of tongues ask and seek and not by fasting and pray fasting don't know how to fast Isaiah chapter 58 fast humbling yourselves before the Lord time is as you see you know Jerusalem this is a huge prophecy it came true uh, now what's next temple and the Antichrist do you understand how close we are getting you if you don't have victory today what you're gonna have it when the world falls apart you will not have victory then it's even harder to get victory while the world is falling apart right in front of you and you being part of it you might die in the midst of that make sure you have solid foundation of the Word of God and in praying and in knowing the Lord okay don't get outside of that don't focus on these garbage UFO theories all these you know reptilian who care who cares who cares you need to have Christ in you you need to have Jesus in you you need to have fellowship with God there's nothing else there's nothing greater than that there's nothing greater than the commandment of loving God having that relationship with God there's nothing greater than having you know love for the people there's nothing greater than that focus yourself on what is real matter you know you need to go to heaven. You need to go to heaven. It's not just believe once and once and always say, this is a garbage theory from the hellfire. Or else Jesus would not have said, I never knew you. You you practice wickedness. I, I never knew you. you. You call me Lord, Lord. I never had any servant like you. You never served me. I don't know who you are. Depart from me into the everlasting. It's, you know, Matthew 7, 21. Right? He, he would have never spoken such things. If your hand makes you sin cut it off why would he say such violent statements if your if your foot causes sin cut it off if your eye makes you sin pluck it out it's better for that you don't have those parts and go to heaven than for your whole body to be thrown into hellfire he clearly said you know in revelation again 21 22 you know and their dogs and sorcerers and all these immoral people sexually immoral everybody that that practices lies and and deceit it's all in the burning hellfire forever and ever. You know what's in the word. Don't deceive yourselves. The Bible clearly says, you know, first first Corinthians 6 9, you know, do not be deceived. Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither idolizers, liars, you know, fornicators, any of these sexually immoral people, or whatever you they'll not. Again, I say to you again and again, Paul says, he says several times, okay? They will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not enter in. Don't deceive yourself. Don't, don't get that false doctrine in you. That is a devil's lie. And I experienced it myself. When I was in sin, God rebuked me. He sent angels. He would do everything to tell me that I need to repent and get it right. Or else I couldn't go on with God. Do you understand? God is a holy God. Don't deceive yourself. Be ye holy as I am holy, says the Lord. So make sure you stay in the presence of God. You cannot be holy by yourself. You need God daily. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit daily. Don't fill yourselves with the lust of this world. If you love the world, the love of God is not in you. If you love the world and the things of this world, whatever you love, you have no love of God in you. Because your mind is focused on the world. And whatever your mind is focused on, that's what you love. Get out of there. Get yourself right. As you see these days approaching, pray. Pray.
read the word pray. Change yourself. Repent before the Lord that you are serving idols, other things, other beings, other than God. God is calling you. Come to repentance. Hurry up. Get yourself ready. Time is not enough. Alright, God bless you.